talking about similar figures, but again, it all goes back to proportions. You're just going to set proportions. What they're going to ask you to do is solve for missing sides. So it all goes back to proportions and knowing how to solve for those. Uh, what you need to know about similar figures are figures that have the same shape but not always the same size. What they're going to do is they're going to give you the same shape with two different sizes and and how and the reason we can solve for size using proportions are because they are at a constant ratio. The sides are proportional to each other, which you're going to see here. Right, you need to write everything you see on the screen. If two figures are similar, then there's two things that are mandatory about those things. Hey, it's that the corresponding angles are congruent. The word congruent just means that it's the same size and same shape. They have the same angle measure is really what corresponding angles that are congruent mean. They have the same angle measure, uh, which is important. Hey, cor the corresponding angles that are, are congruent, that's important, and you'll see here in a minute. Corresponding sides are proportional. So... Even though they're not the same length, they're proportional. There's a ratio. Just like everything we've done this week is about ratios. Uh, like scale, like scale on the map, the map on your homework was 13 inches. Well, for every one inch on the map, it was 20 miles. So that's why the distance between St. Louis and Kansas City was 260, is because it was a ratio. These are all, and it was proportional. These are all proportional. Here's... Here's what you're going to see. You're going to see this. Hey, this just means that triangle ABC and this is means similar to triangle XYZ. They name triangles based on their vertices. Vertices are the angles. Hey, uh, which this is angle A and that's angle B and angle C. And so they name this triangle ABC. And this would be triangle XYZ. Now here, this in front of the angle or in front of A means the angle. It's like a bent L. Uh, it means an angle. So the ang measure of angle A, which this sign means congruent to angle X. So A is the same as X. They have the same angle measure. And in the corner of each triangle, they show you that they do, and that's by putting the same symbol. Usually it's one line or two lines. Here it's two lines. They have the same symbol. That's going to be important later when we start doing some of the problems because they'll flip, the, flip things over. Uh, they'll flip things across and so that it won't be see how these are the same shape and they're going the same direction they'll flip the the triangles or the the quadrilaterals or parallelograms they'll flip them and the only way for you to know which sides are corresponding are based on these angles and you see that this is a corresponding with that they're the same angle and you see that angle b is equal to angle y and you can tell because they have the exact same little symbol, and it's just one little tick mark. And then angle Z is congruent to angle C, and they've got the same little tick mark, little symbol in each. So that's what this means, this is, which this is a lot of geometry. You're going to see this a lot in geometry. Okay? The reason you need to know this now is because it comes into play when you're talking about sides that are proportional which is what this means side a b how they name the sides are they just it's called line segments uh, they're based on the angles <coughs> side a b is from angle a to angle b so this is side a b and it's proportional to saying side x y you know which one is proportional to because we look at angles this is one tick mark that's two this is one tick mark that's two so these go together that comes into play later on right? i had well, I'm, I won't ruin it for you, but you need to pay attention to which sides go with each other. BC goes with YC. This side goes with this side. And this side, AC, would go with this side, XZ. Right? That is important. Knowing which sides are corresponding to each other, meaning these sides are proportional and these sides go with each other, that's going to be important to solving your homework. Write this down. Now, this is mostly what your homework is going to do. It's going to say, find a missing measure. All right, so I think there's one or two problems where there's two missing measures, but for the most part, it's just one. Okay. Uh, also, be aware, here in the notes, they just give you the sides you need. That won't always be the case. Sometimes they'll give you sides you don't need. Make sure you know which ones to use and which ones you don't use. Which, when I show you here in a minute how I want you to set this up and show your work, 
it's, it's going to make more sense. Find a missing measure. We're going to find this side. We need to find E to F, okay, because it's X centimeters. I need to know how long E to F is. But I know these are proportional. It tells me in the notes that these are proportional. They're similar triangles. So here's what I want you to do, and I want you to set it up this way. There's another way of doing it, um, but I like to keep it this way because it, it goes off of what we've learned in the last couple days, especially like the one we did yesterday with the maps and, and modeling, okay, where we did model over actual. Here, instead of writing model over actual, we're going to write small over large. So we're going to do the small figure over the large figure. And it always go that way. Now, if you've been taught a different way, and if you want to see the other way, I'll, I'll show you that later. But I like to keep it this way, just because that's what we've been doing. Small over large. And what I do is I don't just write numbers. It, I find that students that just write the numbers down, try to throw it in there, they get them wrong a lot. So what I like to do is I like to name the sides that are proportional to each other. I like to figure out all the sides and then plug in numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a side that's on the small triangle, and that's AC. What side is proportional to that on the large triangle? DF. Isaac? DF. Good. All right. The reason I know that is by looking at the corners. I know that A is congruent to angle D. They have the same little tick mark. And that angle C is congruent to angle F. Those go together. So those are corresponding sides. And then I, then I do another side. I do another ratio. The only other number they give me on a small triangle is B to C. That's the only other side they give me. So that's the side I have to go with, which that would be corresponding to E to F. All right. Later, they'll give you side that you don't use, that you can't use. Uh, so make sure you're, you're knowing what you're Now, once I've got the sides written down, once I know the ratios and all that, now I plug in numbers. AC was 4. DF was 12. BC was 6. EF was X. So I go just like we've been doing for the last several days. I cross multiply. 4X is equal to 72. I divide by 4. And I get X is equal to 18, 18 centimeters. Make sure your units are on there. Here they've given us two figures, they say they're similar, you need to set them up. If you hadn't noted, like, and this is, this is the problem, this is what they're, they're going to try and mess you up with, is most people think the right side always goes with the right side, and the left side always goes with the left side, and the top always goes with the top, and the right, but that's not always how it works. If you haven't noticed on this one, they're flipped, they're mirror images of each other. Angle X doesn't go with angle R, just because it's on the top right. It goes with angle S, right? And angle Y goes with angle T, and you can tell that by the symbols. It's really important to know which sides go and which corners go where because that sets you up for sides that are proportional. Yeah. Right? This side is proportional to this side. Right? One tick mark goes to two, one tick mark goes to two. Right? If you went this side is proportional to that side, you'd actually get it wrong. Right? Now, here they only give you the numbers you need. But later in the homework, they'll give you numbers you don't need and can't use. So make sure you're paying attention to that. So let's do it. Let's do small over large. Uh, WZ is the first side I'm going to do. That What side is proportional to WZ? RU. R -U. Then I'm going to do WX. And the side that's proportional to this is RS. Or you can call it SR. It doesn't, doesn't matter on the names as long as you get the two... Uh, letters that you need. Then you plug in what you got. WZ is 4. RU would be 28. And WX was D. And SR was 49. So you cross multiply those. You get 28D is equal to 196. I divide by 28. I find D is what? Seven. It's seven feet. Make sure you have your units. Make sure and that's important. Okay. 
All right, so they're giving you two triangles, but they're not in the same direction. They're not facing the same way. They flipped them. So you have to pay attention, and I, and I said this, you have to pay attention to the angles to figure out what the corresponding sides are because a few of you did something that I told you to be aware of, and you forgot, I guess. Set these up as small over large. Always write it like this. Okay, and Some of you didn't didn't plug in the names in, uh, of each side and then you got confused on what was what goes where well that's part of the problem and that would be why most of you got it wrong uh i'm going to say the one on the right's the smallest just by looking at the numbers so i'm going to go with uh gh and by looking and figuring out which one it's proportional to right some of you had it as proportional kl that's wrong it's proportional to jk or or K J okay. because and I know that for a fact because this is one tick mark and that's two this is one tick mark and that's two so this side goes with that side some of you had this side with that side which is going to make it wrong and then I do uh, I H or H I and that's proportional to K L well some of you again you didn't write these down hey, and you just looked and you're like well, this is on the right, and that's that's over here, so that must be. And some of you use 10. Some of you went GI. Do you see GI in here? Any of you? There's a reason you don't see GI. Because look on the big one. Does it tell you how long JK, JL is? It does not. I don't know how long this one is. So how can I figure, can I put a ratio of JL to GI? If I don't know how long they are, I can't. I can't use that as a ratio. Some of you did, and that's why you've got this wrong, because you used ten. Again, part of the problem, ladies, please listen. Part of the problem was you didn't list this out, and the ones that did weren't paying attention to these tick marks and figuring out which ones goes with which ones. Some of you went from one to three. I ain't got the 10, but there's not a number for that one. So I wouldn't want to use this side. And I said that. Make sure you're aware of stuff they give you that you won't can't use, which is 10. You can't use 10. So plugging in numbers, I get 4 over A is equal to 7 over 14. Cross multiply, 7A is equal to 56. 56 divide by 7. A is equal to 8 centimeters. That's right. Here's your homework assignment for today.